My name's John Frederick Gonser. We came to Bristol in 1955. My, my grandma and grandpa Wynn, Lavere and Alta Wynn, uh, wanted to buy a grocery store. So they, my dad worked at Tip Top Bakery and he had this area around here for uh, his delivery and he found out that there was a store for sale it was called Lord's East End Market. So that was in 1954 that that happened. So they, they made an offer on the store. They bought the store. And in February of 1955, my grandpa had a heart attack and died. So he died before they even came, before we even moved up here. Well, my grandma decided she would go ahead and run the store. So my dad and my mom and I moved up, up here with her. There was a house attached to the store and we lived in that house that was attached to the store. And my dad had quit Tip Top Bakery and he was running the meat, meat counter and stuff back there. And my mom was helping my grandma and they had, my grandma had uh, hired Jean Dempster. She worked there for a while. Uh, Arliss Garman worked there for a while. Um, quite a while, actually, both of them. And then um, when we, uh, we left there, my mom and dad and I left there, and we moved to uh, Scamore Hardware. But my grandma was there for quite some time, uh, by herself in the house, and then she ended up selling the house, the house or, or the business to or the grocery store to Hugh Harker, who ended up I don't know exactly when that was, but he uh, tore that store down and then built H and H uh, Market then, and that was I don't know that I don't remember. She died in 1980, so in that area there, so because she worked for for Hugh. For quite a few years, and then, uh, then when she did finally did retire, then uh, she just lived there on one out there on one twenty, and uh, down from the chicken coops there. Sure, sure. Now, uh, when you lived in, at uh, above Scamahorn Hardware, uh, how old were you at that time? I was probably eight because my sister, or close to nine, because my Diane was born in uh, December of 1955, so we moved in that area um, mm -hmm. sometime during the summer. Because I remember my mother complained about how hot it was upstairs all the time. <laughs> so, especially with a little baby like Diane. Sure. And, and at that time, <clears throat> um, your father Russ. Mm -hmm. Went was working with Dick and Don King. Yeah, he would. He went to work there for Don and 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 Dick Scamorn, Don King and Dick Scamorn. Uh, I don't know how long he worked there for a while, for a while, and then I don't. He had several jobs there before he finally um, we settled down here and uh, he uh, made Bristol laminating. So we had a stint that we all moved to Kansas. He worked for Skyline at that time, and we all moved to Sky, moved to uh, Park City, Kansas, um, for a while. We were over there maybe a year and a half. My mom says, "Don't like it. We're mom moving with you or without you." So my dad called up uh, Glenn Brown, and Glenn Brown had Bristol Pride, Bristol Products, and. Uh, Let's see if he would have a, an empty truck coming to load up our furniture and stuff. And uh, Glenn made that arrangement, and he moved us all back from, from Kansas. Uh, so. John, tell me about um, your time with the Bristol Fire Department. I was on the fire department from for 11 years, and I was an EMT for eight of those years. Um, 
I lived lived out on County Road 23 in uh, uh, Bob Stone's old house. We bought that and remodeled that, and that's where I was at when I got on the fire department. And uh, uh, I remember each of us had a phone. It was hooked up to the fire station, and when someone would call in a, a ambulance call or a fire, you know, like, there's like 12 or 15 of us who would answer the phone all at one time. And then we'd uh, we'd uh, all go fire department, fire department, and so there they get somebody get the address, and we'd all run for the fire station, you know. And, and uh, by the time we got to the fire station, nobody could remember where we were going, <laughs> so we had to call dispatch again to get you know not every time, but you know. Um, but it was interesting. Uh, Cloyce Cummins was the fire chief at that at that time. Uh, Dean Pickrell's on, Fred Yerd was on, uh, Kenny Lingelfelder, um, Bill Wietrich, um, I think some of the other, other guys, Jerry Carmine, he was on there, he was chief for a while, um, Bill Dempster, Dean Renfro, Danny Swartz. So uh, like I said, I was on there for about 11 years and uh, had some good times and some bad times, yeah, yeah. you know. Uh, when I was on the fire department, it was always uh, interesting to work with Dean uh, Renfro. He was a good teacher. Uh, Dennis Schwartz was a good guy to work with. Bill Collins, uh, yeah. Bill Dumpster. You know, we all had a, they, they were all good to work with. I mean, they, they would show you how to do stuff, you know, they had a lot of tra good training. And uh, they were just, uh, when it came to the ambulance, those guys were all paramedics at, at the same time. They all went to paramedic class and, and took the time to, to get their paramedic license and really grew, grew the fire department from those four guys, actually, uh, were the backbone of the fire department there for quite a while. As a kid, uh, my memories of Bristol were, uh, some of them were, uh, living down there at the East End Market and riding my bike on the sidewalk there and there Thorpe's nursing home was right there and you had to drive ride your bike past that and there was always old people out there at that time and I was just young and they always scared me and they were out there shaking and carrying on you know and and now I know what that is but back then I didn't you know and it, it was always pretty scary to to drive right past there and then uh, I remember um, <laughs> from the store, uh, Doug Sigsby and uh, Dick Stutzman, they used to call my grandma up and say, hey, do you have uh, Prince Albert in a can? You know, you better let him out. And she used to get so mad at those guys. And she knew who it was who was doing it. You know, she knew <laughs> there was the kids around there. Uh, but uh, that and, and uh, just uh, the homecoming down on Main Street and, and down at the park. Hermes Park. Those are pretty good memories of, of the town. Um, that's what, well, yeah. Can, can you uh, describe for me a little bit the neighborhood out on County Road 27 that you grew up? Yeah, I, I grew up out on County Road 27. Um, on one side of us was Kenny and Hazel Pickerel, and down the road a ways was uh, Montel, uh, Hamilton's, and Myrtle. Um, but, um, and then Jerry Pickerel had built a house down on the other side of his mom and dad there. And when I was younger, when I lived out there, uh, I would get with, go over to Jerry's house and ask, knock on the door and, and Marguerite would come, his wife would come out there and I'd say, can Jerry come out and play? And we'd go over, he'd come out and he'd go out and play basketball with me out there. They had a big, uh, basketball hoop out there in the driveway over at Kenny's. And we'd go over there and we'd, he'd play um, basketball with me. But then Jim Hamilton and I, we would play, in, there's a gravel pit back there. Uh, Mrs. Repro owned that and we would play back there in the gravel pit in the summer summertime we'd go back there. In the wintertime we'd take our toboggan sleds and stuff and 
slide up and down those big hills back in there. And then, uh, so that was, that was a good time back doing that kind of stuff, yeah. What did you like the most about growing up in a small community, Bristol? When I was a kid, everybody knew everybody. Uh, you know, the, everybody's, except for the Gonsers, were related to everybody else, it seemed like, you know. But, uh, you know, you always, always knew everybody that, that you could see, that you saw on the street. You, you knew who they were. Everybody was pretty friendly and, and everything, you know. And, and uh, the town was growing. And, and uh, it was just a, a good place to grow up at. It was friendly and clean, always clean. The town was always clean. And uh, um, it was just... Uh, like I said, everybody knew everybody. You know, there wasn't hardly any strangers back then in Bristol. Let you, if you saw somebody, you uh, kind of questioned them who the heck they were, you know, or what they were doing in Bristol, just about, you know, because there was, you know, everybody knew everyone. Sure. So, I think it's important when you move into a community like that, Bristol or wherever, that uh, um, you get involved in the community. You know, go to the town meetings, go to the, you know, find out who's on the fire department or police department and all that, and, and just get involved in, in some of the stuff that goes on in the, in the towns, because there, there's plenty of work to be done in these areas, so. What are your thoughts about the importance of preserving the history of growing up in Bristol or your thoughts of Bristol? Uh, the Bristol Heritage Group. What What are your thoughts about how important is it to you that they be preserved? Well, it's very important to me because of the history of the town and what little bit of history that the Gossards have put into it and the uh, winds, my grandma, grandpa, or my grandma. Um, but um, the younger generation I don't think most of them really care. You know, they they don't um, they don't know the value of, of the history, you know, or they don't want to take the time to to learn. It doesn't seem like, and just like today, I've learned a lot of different things, you know, about different people here coming here to these meetings and stuff, you know, and it's very interesting because there's a lot of things I didn't know. Yeah, you know, but I don't think the younger generation, my great grandkids, would give a hoot about Bristol. You know, just a place, just a town. You know, there's no, they don't have any uh, lineage back. You know, what do you think can be done to change that attitude? I think in the schools they ought to be able to have some kind of a history. Uh, you know, you used to have history and civics and that kind of thing. You know, you learn about the governments and the town, how towns are ran and stuff like that. Uh, Elkhart he used to have the, you know, you could be a mayor for the day or a police chief for the day or something like that. You know, you need to get some of these kids involved in that kind of stuff to get them some uh, interest in that kind of thing. You know, the fire department, the police department. The, the town itself, the council, and all that. You know, um, I don't know any other way to to do it. You know.